Well, good morning, everyone. For the past two nights, we've seen what could have been peaceful protests turn into violent destruction. That is why this morning, joined by members of the city council, the chief of police and the chief of fire, we come to you with a heavy heart. We are all disappointed. And we feel the pain that is being felt throughout this country for the last few nights. What we know, as we stand here, the violence and the destruction, and the images we've seen across this city, is not the Richmond we know. It's not the Richmond we know. We saw local businesses, some black-owned businesses, that have served Richmond for decades, vandalized and looted. We seen people's homes on fire. Bricks have flown through the windows of synagogue. We've seen vandal we've seen buildings vandalized throughout the city. Spray paint. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time to say that enough is enough and this must stop. This must end. We cannot sit here idly and, and agree and tell everyone here that these actions are productive, because they're not. When you block law enforcement from allowing fire services to get to a home, an occupied home, that is caught on fire, you are not inspiring change. When you knock out windows in businesses that had nothing to do with this, you are not inspiring change. That's an insult to the cause. Right? That's an insult to the cause. We all know what happened in Minneapolis. Those actions are an insult to the cause. It's an insult to black men, black women, who suffer every day, every day at the hands of structural racism in this nation. At this point, these bad actors are hijacking the cause. As I said, peaceful protests in solidarity against the injustices of black men, hijacked by bad actors. As soon as you loot a store or set a public bus on fire, You've made, you've stopped protesting. You're not demonstrating. You've made it about you when it should be about, when it should be about us. Taking advantage of our pain, making a mockery of George Floyd's death, using our frustration, our anger, and our heartbreak to create chaos to create chaos. Bottom line is wrong. 
it's wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, let me be frank. People coming into our city and vandalizing some legacy black businesses, businesses in general, public transportation that people here in the city rely on under the guise of police accountability, that's not progress for black America. That's not progress for this city. So don't kid yourself. That's not progress. That's not, the, that's not protest. That's not certainly not the justice that we seek for George Floyd. Last night, four officers, a few firefighters as well, ended up injured. And we have one man suffering a life-threatening gunshot wound while he was in his car on the streets of the city of Richmond. It's wrong. And I think it's easy to say that we cannot go on like this. This is not us. This is not us. This is the antithesis to the solutions that we seek. So after two nights of violence and destruction, we're taking steps to continue to promote peaceful, lawful, and safe demonstration and protect both people and property. Now, I'm grateful for the Richmond Police Department, the Fire Department, the Richmond Ambulance Authority for their crucial work during this time. They've served with courageous, with courage, and with patience over the last 48 hours. But they need additional support and support these efforts. I've been in conversation since late yesterday, late this morning, early this morning, I guess you could say, with Governor Northam. And I've requested the assistance of the National Guard to be available if needed. And the governor has indicated they are ready to step in if Richmond needs that support and assistance. I've also asked the governor to declare a curfew in the city of Richmond tonight, starting tonight. We'll go, starting tonight, Sunday, May 31st at 8 p.m. And he has granted that request. The curfew will roll from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. The curfew shall apply to the occup occupation of public spaces within the Richmond city limits, and it will be enforced. It will be enforced. Simple to say that law enforcement, medical workers, uh, those who are Part of those uh, categories of occupations will obviously be exempted from the order. And the governor has continued to work on that and will be releasing details. But the bottom line, people may only be out in public within city, city limits to go back and forth to work, seek medical attention, or assistance from first responders. And let's not forget that we are still in the middle of a global pandemic. Let's not forget that. And that is taking a disproportionate toll on the black and brown communities that reside right here in the city of Richmond. As we've been talking about for the last 10 to 11 weeks, public safety and public health will be this city's main and number one priority. And it remains such today. So here's the deal. I'm not asking people who come to this city or people who reside in this city not to exercise their First Amendment rights. 
That's not our request today. I'm simply asking you to remember that this disease continues to kill the black community at the highest rates. We all we need to still take care when we are in these spaces. You know, the truth is, the pain that our community is feeling, the anger and mourning that crowds have come to Richmond streets, it's visceral, it's real. The pain is real and it is compounded over time. Each and every one of us feels, feels that pain. And if you're part of the black community, you have felt that pain in a disproportionate way for a very, very long time. Very long time. But many of the individuals who felt that pain, they are the ones who have been peacefully demonstrating. Peacefully demonstrating. And there are others who chose to channel that pain into destruction and into violence. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not how we get the results that we want as a community. That is not how we get the results that we want as a people. That is not who we are. Not who we are. If you desire the same results, the positive results that will allow to lift black people up, we ask that you come to the table peacefully. Not knocking windows and light fire to homes. There's a process for that. And I get it. Some have felt excluded from that process for a very long time. But we are all here today to say we welcome you to the table. We welcome you to the process. But violence and destruction, that is not the way. And that will not be allowed any further in the city of Richmond. With that, I'm going to ask Chief Will Smith to address the public over about the incidents over the last 48 hours. Chief Smith. 